The past few years has been an absolute nightmare for Anna Duggar. Just in case you didn't know, she is the wife of the now convicted Josh Duggar and the mother of his seven children. And Anna has been getting a lot of heat for her decisions over the past few years, especially after the accusations about her husband were made public. And what is so super frustrating is that she has endured so much from just one of these scandals that it should be enough for her to want to leave. But unfortunately, throughout the course of their marriage, new scandals were always popping up involving her husband. And for her, it just became the new normal. Now, because she has lived so much of her life on camera, people are extremely invested in her life and what happens next. And the main questions that viewers have been screaming from the rooftops are, why would you stay with him? Now, Anna has stayed particularly loyal to her husband pretty much to the same defiant level as his own parents. And to be fair, most of us have sympathy for Anna Duggar. And if you don't, then you don't know her entire story. Because the more you learn about her history, the more tragic her story becomes. Not for him, but for her. And if there was such a thing as a relationship lottery, you guys, she was basically dealt one of the absolute worst tickets in the game. Anna has been through a lot and is still going through a lot. And so I wonder, and I ask you guys, if she had known everything back then that she knows now, and even more specifically, if she knew even just the few major details that almost everyone else around her knew at this time, would she do it all again? It's time to take a deep dive from the beginning. This is the story of Anna Duggar. Now, before we go all the way down the Anna Duggar rabbit hole, we need to go all the way back to the beginning and actually way before Anna entered Josh's life. And I want to introduce you to the Holt family. They were actually an integral part of Josh Duggar's federal trial. And Jim Holt, actually Arkansas Senator Jim Holt, and his wife, Bobby Holt, were a married couple who were extremely close to the Duggar family for decades. So close, in fact, that the Duggar kids called them aunt and uncle. And around the time Josh was 15 years old, he actually confessed to Bobby about his crimes. Now, the Holts themselves have 11 children who are close in age to the Duggar kids. And in particular, their daughter, Kaylee Holt, who was close to Josh's age. Now, I believe that Kaylee was probably Josh's first love because they dated in 2003 and 2004. And that was when Josh was 15 and 16 years old. And things got so serious that both the Duggars and the Holtz thought and hoped that Josh and Kaylee would eventually marry one day. So what went wrong? Now, this next part is extremely important. Because the Holtz were guests on a podcast in 2022 called The Sojo Files. And I want you to listen to the reason the Holtz gave as to why the Duggars first informed them about Josh's issues. Then later that night, after we had talked a while and Josh had confessed a bunch of stuff that night, which none of it at that time, you think none of it is criminal. You know, it's like, well, he he like 
kind of touched real quickly over the clothes. Did it once to this girl was like, okay, so what do we do? I mean, I, I, I've never been around anything like that. They knew other things were leading up to it. In other words, they had seen signs and the things that el- the other things that were confessed that night. Um, and they told us about that too. But I remember that night on March 30th, they had brought us over because they said, you know, I'm like, the reason they actually said the reason we're telling you this is because Josh is oh, Michelle, Michelle, Michelle. that Josh is in a relationship with Kaylee. Right. And that was the reason they only that, told us because they know he had done it before and never told us before then. Yeah, that's but a because he so. cheated on Kaylee. That's why we were involved. So if the only reason the Duggars told the Holtz initially about Josh's issues was because they felt morally that Josh was obligated to tell the Holtz because at the time of these incidents, Josh was technically dating Kaylee and Michelle and Jim Bob considered it cheating. Not because Josh was a potential danger and not because regardless of cheating or not, the Holtz had a right to know. Nope. The Duggars believed that it was the Holtz business because of the infidelity aspect. So the pair obviously broke up after this revelation, which naturally probably most people would have done and most parents would have advised. I mean, knowledge is power, people, right? So keep that in mind when we talk about Anna's story, because you better believe we will be revisiting that topic soon. And forgive me because we're going to be jumping back and forth a little bit in this timeline, but I found it truly crucial for us to really get a grasp of some of the most important concepts. So before we go to the origins of Josh and Anna's story, first, we need to fast forward to the year 2015. Now, 2015 was a pretty important year in the grand scheme of things because it was like this year that was sandwiched perfectly between two really extremely important periods of time. So in 2015, that's when Josh's Ashley Madison scandal was prevalent. And he admitted to cheating on Anna and having an addiction to porn. That's when everything was made public. That's when everything came to light. Now, seven years prior to this date, Anna and Josh were married. And believe it or not, seven years after this date... That's when Josh was charged federally and received a 12-year federal prison sentence. And so, like I said, before we go all the way back to the beginning, let's discuss some really important events that happened here. Midway, right about here, and the year was 2015. A fallen moralist Josh Duggar. He's the highest profile Ashley Madison user busted in the recent hacking, and yesterday... In a statement, Josh's parents, Michelle and Jim Bob, said that their oldest son has checked himself into a long-term treatment center. There was a woman by the name of Jessica, and she made a viral Facebook post online about Anna. Now, this post was created shortly after Josh publicly admitted at the time that he was unfaithful to Anna and that he had an addiction to pornography. And her post was titled, Let's Talk About Anna. And I want to know, you guys, if you agree with her point of view. Here's what she wrote. Let me tell you, Anna Duggar is in the worst position she could possibly be in right now. Anna Duggar was crippled by her parents by receiving no education, having no work experience or life experience for that matter, and then was shackled to this loser because his family was famous in their religious circle. Anna Duggar was taught that her sole purpose in life, the most meaningful thing she could do, was to be chaste and proper, a devout wife and a mother. Anna Duggar did that. Anna Duggar followed the rules that were imposed on her from the get-go, and this is what she got in reward. A husband who she found out in the span of six months not only harmed his own sisters, but was unfaithful to her in the most humiliating ways possible. While she was fulfilling her duty of providing him with four children and raising them, she lived up to the standard that men set for her, of being chaste and godly, and in return, the man who demanded this of her sought women who were the opposite. Be this, they told her. She was 
and it wasn't enough. So what do you guys think? That was a lot packed into one paragraph, and we're going to go over more later, but that was so powerful and insightful. In my opinion, it was so true. And with that, that is where I want our story to begin. Because looking at Anna's story through the lens of the ugly truths that many around her knew, she was left in the dark. And the first year that I really want us to heavily focus on is the year 2006, because a lot happened that year. And for starters, 2006 was the first year that Josh met Anna. Now, what we're going to do now is explore their now deleted website titled Josh and Anna Duggar Family. And I was able to get the website snapshot in time where they documented in detail exactly how they met and I'm going to use their own words and their own account. So pay close attention to the next part because the dates and the details are important. So Josh stated, in early 2006, my dad was campaigning for state Senate. We were a couple of weeks from the primary election when my family took our annual trip to the ATI Home Educators Conference. I was busy working with the AV team and had very little free time. But during one of the breaks, I ended up talking through my lunch break with some new friends. So Anna's account is, my siblings and I enjoyed meeting Joshua. Now, you guys, this next part seems innocent enough, but now that we know the extent of Josh's depravities, it just gives this new level meaning of creepy. So here's what she said. As we introduced ourselves, I was amazed that Joshua was able to guess our ages right. Usually, people would think I was five to seven years older than I really was, and it was getting quite embarrassing. He talked for a while about their family's political campaign and about them moving into their new house. Josh mentioned that he would have to come over and visit them sometime. I was like, that is so nice, but we live all the way out in Florida. It would never happen. As our conversation came to an end, I remember thinking, I've never met anyone else like this before. But that was the extent of my thoughts. And then Josh said, Well, my thoughts, however, were very different from Anna's. As we talked, I felt God speak to my heart that this was the girl I was going to marry someday. I enjoyed our fellowship and then resumed my schedule for the rest of the day. By that night, I still could not get her off my mind. I went to my dad and told him what I felt like God had told me. He told me that he thought it could be a possibility and then asked if I felt that I was ready to get into a relationship. I knew that I had a lot to get ready if I felt courting or even marriage was in the future. So love was in the air in 2006, at least for one of them. (laughs) But guess what else was happening that year? For starters, the Duggars were supposed to appear on the Oprah Winfrey show, but that was canceled after a 61-year-old woman allegedly emailed Harpo Studios to warn producers about Josh. And Oprah's team forwarded the information to the Department of Human Services, which ultimately triggered the investigation by the Springdale Police Department. And also, in 2006, Michelle and Jim Bob allegedly told the police that when Josh was accused of his crimes... A family friend wrote down the accusations in a letter that was then placed in a book in the Duggars' home sometime in 2006. And the Duggars loaned the book to another person, and that letter was discovered. And it was quoted that when police asked Jim Bob to bring Josh in for an interview in 2006, he attempted to hire a lawyer and refused to produce his son for questioning. And at least two lawyers refused to take his case. And by December 2006... During this time, the Springdale Police Department interviewed the Duggars about Josh's behavior. Okay, so with all of those events happening in 2006, I want us to circle back to their initial meeting at the 2006 Home Educators Conference early in 2006. And as you recall, Anna was, you know, smitten with Josh. But Josh knew inwardly that she would be his wife one day. Now, a few weeks after the conference, here's what Anna said. I was surprised a few weeks later when my dad announced to our family that we would be traveling to Arkansas to spend a few days with the Duggars. 
The first night at the Duggars' home during Bible time, Joshua shared his testimony. I was encouraged to see that there was really a young man out there who was accountable to his parents and was striving to keep his heart pure. As a girl, my parents explained that it was normal to have desires for a relationship, especially when you see a young man that had the qualities you desired in a future life partner. While at the Duggars' home, I noticed Joshua had many of the things I desired in a future partner. I began to commit those desires to the Lord and reaffirmed my commitment to wait on him to lead through my parents in that area. After all, my sisters and I were friends with the Duggar girls and my brothers were friends with the Duggar boys. That was the way things were supposed to be. And regarding that visit, Josh had his own things to say. I enjoyed the Keller's visit and was able to watch Anna from a distance, trying not to make it noticeable to others. The day that the Keller family left our home, I immediately talked with my dad again. I told him that I was for sure that Anna was the one for me. He agreed that God was moving us in that direction and counseled me to keep praying for our relationship. As we spoke further about the possibilities of courtship, he encouraged me as an 18-year-old man to begin diligently preparing spiritually and financially for the day that God would bring us together. And you guys, from Anna's perspective at that time, I can see how she would think Josh was, you know, heaven sent. And as she said, Josh, to her, had many qualities that she desired in a partner, and she admitted that she liked that he strived to keep his heart pure. But there were already so many cracks in this story. She was so blind to the truth and reality that what was really going on then? I mean, if she knew everything going on then, would she really give him the same favor? Would she really see him in that same light? There was so much at this time that Anna was unaware of. And the worst part was that the worst was yet to come. So Josh was determined to make Anna his wife. And coincidentally, he just happened to find the love of his life the same year that authorities were starting to become aware of what Josh Duggar had done years prior. And in 2006, a lot of things were bubbling to the surface. Now, these are Anna's parents, Michael and Suzette Keller. And it was also in 2006 that the entire Keller family traveled down to Arkansas to visit the Duggars. Now, both by Anna and Josh's accounts, both parents knew that their children had an interest in one another. All right, now here's where the waters get a little bit murky. So as you guys recall, the Holtz told us that when their daughter Kaylee and Josh were together, and they were essentially believed to be married one day, the Duggars advised them of Josh's issues because they felt infidelity had played a part. So what exactly happened with the Kellers? And at this point, there is No such thing as infidelity because both Anna and Josh were interested in each other, but they had no commitments made, nor were they dating at this time. So how much did the Duggars feel obligated to tell the Keller family? Now, I want to go all the way back to the Holtz account of the events around the time that their daughter was dating Josh. Now, there are a few important moments that really stuck out to me. And now, according to the Holtz, they believe that especially Jim Bob was trying to play the game and not taking Josh's issues as seriously as they needed to be. And the first example is how Jim Bob really didn't take Josh's recovery as seriously as the Holtz thought they should. And specifically, they gave an example of how while Josh was in this Christian-based treatment center, Jim Bob wanted to pick him up and bring him home for his birthday, which the Holtz strongly disagreed with. Well, we had a huge discussion with them about Jim Bob wanted Josh home for his birthday. And all of us, all the people in the church were telling him, this is not long enough for him to be in counseling. I mean, none of the people in the church went down to see him because they were still just shocked what really made us go hold a second 
is when he was able to just check him out and bring him home. Now, because Jim Bob was able to have access to Josh in that capacity, the Holtz knew at that point that this Christian-based treatment center was in no way tied to law enforcement or the authorities because Obviously, in centers like that, parents and guardians are not able to whisk away their children for events like that. They would first have to get approval from trained professionals. And not only that, but the Holtz were extremely disappointed in how Jim Bob was, in their opinion, sweeping things under the rug and not taking this as seriously as they needed to be. And in fact, Jim discussed his stern warning to Jim Bob about the long-term consequences if he didn't give this the proper attention that it needed at this time. He's not learned anything from all of this. He's still trying to play the game and cover stuff up. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's still, I mean, he just, and it breaks my heart because, you know, I, we were friends for so long, but at that point it was like, okay, I'm, I'm done. All we know is what Josh confessed to us. And when we tried to get him help, it was wanted to be covered up. And I told Jim Bob, if you continue to cover it up, he's only going to get worse. And at that time, the only thing we knew in 2003 on March 30th, I, I was just shocked. First of all, and I said, the first thing you got to do is get him out of the house. And we got him out that night to protect the girls. Also, you guys pay attention to how the Duggars really minimized or Maybe, listen, they, maybe they were just extremely ignorant and blinded by the truth because Josh was their son. It was their first son. It was their first child. Maybe they were in denial of what a monster their firstborn was. But regardless of if it was ignorance or if it was intentional, listen to the excuses that the Duggars provided that really downplayed Josh's behavior. We were told he's a 15-year-old boy. He was very curious. We had... We didn't let him have an outlet, so to speak. And when I heard this part, you guys, I immediately started to cringe. So the excuse is that he was just this curious boy who I guess just had raging hormones. It was just curiosity, guys. But the part that makes my skin crawl was that bit about not having an outlet. So stay with me here, guys. I want to know if you're tracking what I'm tracking. So for a young man who is going through hormonal changes and is curious about anatomy and things in that arena, what do you think was meant by Josh not having an outlet? I guess to temper urges? Because to me, and this is all just my conspiracy and speculation, I have not found any interviews, I've not found videos or facts about this part. So once again, this part is all my educated guess, it's my theory, it's my speculation. Is it possible that the Duggars believed that the solution to Josh's problems and his quote-unquote outlet was to get married so that he could finally relieve himself of those curiosities? I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but that was my thought. And obviously, to my own horror, if there is some truth to that, Ugh. What a backwards way of thinking, and it just shows that in incidents like this, that is why it's so important for trained professionals to be involved from the beginning. Now, with everything that we just learned, and trust me, that was a lot. And it was heavy. But there's even more. We already thought that the depth of Josh's depravities were horrendous. But according to the Holtz, there is even more that has never been told to the public. And so the story that we were told, and it made sense to us at the time, was that, and believe me, there's a lot of stuff that was confessed that night that hasn't even been out in public anywhere. Stuff that if we told you there's, there's a psychological... What they actually saw leading up to when the March 30th incident... Right, because they found out in February... happened of, with... Jane Doe 4. Yeah, they found out so. in March, or excuse me, February of 2002. And you guys, I can't even imagine what those could be. But with all of that in mind, what it shows me is that there is no way in hell that any parent should or would treat this as a curiosity issue 
or his son not having an outlet. And as we all know, there is a slew of deeper issues here that required serious and in-depth intervention. Okay, so it was really important that we revisited what the Holtz knew, because now that there's this new family in the Duggar sites, at least when it came to Josh, and I'm talking about the Kellers, the Kellers were a super deeply religious Christian family similar to the Duggars' belief and value system. Now, you may be wondering, or you may already know, did the Duggars tell them about Josh before Anna was married? And the answer may surprise at least some of you. Now, according to People magazine, long before the world ever knew about this abuse that had transpired in the Duggar family household, the dark secret was shared with the woman who was soon to be his wife. Now, People Source, who was allegedly close to Anna, said this. Anna did know. Her whole family knew something had happened. But before they said I do, in 2008, the Duggars revealed their dark secret to Anna and her family. It definitely wasn't portrayed in its entirety. I don't think she understood the entirety of what had happened, It was kind of something that was swept under the rug and nobody made a big deal about it. And see, this is the part that is so crucial, yet there really isn't a lot of information to go on. There's a whole bunch of speculation online about Anna's dad, Michael, that maybe he knew the extent of the abuse, but that is only speculation. Because at least from what I've researched, I have not seen any interviews given by the Kellers, or Anna for that matter, that informs the public as to the extent of what information the Duggars provided to the Kellers about Josh's issues. So once again, I'm going to have to speculate, guess, and give my educated opinion, and I am always of the belief that the best predictor of future behavior is to look at the patterns of past behavior to get a pretty decent and accurate calculation. And if I were a betting woman, I would bet that Jim Bob did the exact same thing that he did with the Keller family as he did to the Holt family. I bet that Jim Bob once again minimized the entire problem, presented it once again as this curiosity issue, just this curious young boy without an outlet. Yuck. That sounds so creepy. And my guess is that what the Holt warned about that there is still more that hasn't come to light. And so the story that we was told, and it made sense to us at the time, was that, and believe me, there's a lot of stuff that was confessed that night that hasn't even been out in public anywhere. Stuff that if we told you there's there's a psychological... What they actually saw leading up to when the March 30th... And I doubt that that was shared with the Kellers. Just my speculation, guys. Once again, I want to make it clear that is my conspiracy. Make your own opinions about this situation because that is not fact. And also, I just don't see any loving parent knowingly and willingly giving their innocent daughter away to such a monster. Now, regarding the theories about the Kellers knowing the full extent of Josh's depravities, I believe I know where this rumor mill derives. And basically, for those of you who didn't know, Anna's father has had a soft heart for inmates and the incarcerated, and he spent a lot of his time helping them. And it was described on Anna and Josh's website. In 1994, Mr. Keller got called for jury duty. While in the juvenile court, he immediately saw the great need for Christ in the lives of those in trouble with the law. He started volunteering at a local juvenile detention center and his heart was instantly burdened for the juveniles. In 1996, Mr. Keller made the decision to leave his good job to work as a full-time missionary to the incarcerated. They spent months on the deputation, and God blessed them with many faithful supporters. Working in juvenile detention centers, county jails, and state correctional facilities, he began to see God working in the hearts of those who were locked up. Okay, so with that in mind, The theory is that maybe 
The Duggars felt comfortable disclosing the extent of the information to the Kellers, especially because of their sympathetic nature to troubled youth and the incarcerated. We will never know the full truth, unless, of course, Anna or her family speaks out. But for now, that part remains a mystery. Regardless on where you fall on what the Kellers knew or didn't know, most people believe that the Kellers failed their daughter. And I want to circle back to Jessica because there is still more in her post that was just straight fire, like literally and figuratively. So here's the last part of her post that I didn't mention before. We have to teach our daughters that they are not beholden to men like this, that they don't have to marry a man their father deems acceptable and then stay married to that man long, long after he proved himself unacceptable. As for my girls, I'll raise them to think they breathe fire. And I love her message, especially in light of the predicament that Anna has been left with. Now, once again, according to People Magazine, it was reported that Anna's parents allegedly still control her choices and supposedly, according to People, when one of Anna's siblings reached out to their father about the situation, his response was, well, King David had an affair. I just wish she could be left alone to figure out her own feelings on this matter. Alrighty then. So with that backstory in mind, let's go back to around the time that Anna and Josh were smitten with each other and the two families had met a few times. Now, Josh said this about his conversation with Jim Bob. As we spoke further about the possibilities of courtship, he encouraged me as an 18 year old man to begin diligently preparing spiritually and financially for the day that God would bring us together. Now, this next part is so ironic. Now, remember, Jim Bob told Josh to prepare spiritually and financially so that one day he could be a provider for his new family. Josh said, after returning home from the conference, I began working towards opening my pre-owned car dealership and preparing my future house. And the irony in that, it was at a car dealership, not this particular one, but one of his other car dealerships, that federal investigators found a legal material downloaded there. I mean, wow. Okay, and this next part is crucial because in 2007, December 2007 to be exact, and basically a year after all this crap happened, Josh provided really crucial recollections about pursuing Anna and asking her father for permission to marry her. So here is what went down, and this is all according to Josh. In December of 2007, Anna's brother called me and asked if I would be able to help him with an anger resolution seminar in a Florida state prison. I told him that I would have to pray about it, and I immediately felt God say yes the next month, I found myself again driving the nearly 1,000 mile trip to North Florida. After finishing my first week of seminars with Anna's brother in Central Florida Maximum Security State Prison, we returned to the Keller's home. I could not wait any longer. I knew that the ball was in my court. After dinner and sharing the evening with the family, I asked to talk to Mr. Keller alone. Everyone else quickly hurried off to bed and I fumbled to put my thoughts into words. Finally, it got out. I feel like God is leading me into a relationship with your daughter, Anna. Could I have permission to court her? After asking this, Mr. Keller gave me some encouraging words, ending our discussion by saying that he would need a month to pray about it. I went to bed, and I guess sleep came sometime that night because I remember waking up. Mr. Keller pulled me aside after breakfast and told me that he had prayed about it, Though he wouldn't quite say yes, he gave me a thumbs up and said, all the lights are green. And it was shortly after this time that the two were engaged, which was televised for all to see. And can I just say, in the 19 Kids and Counting episode covering Josh and Anna's engagement, Michelle Duggar clearly stated that Anna had agreed not to court until she turned 20. And I found it creepy that Josh had to propose marriage on her exact 20th birthday. I mean, I get it. He has puppy love and he couldn't contain himself. He couldn't wait. 
But like, let her celebrate her damn birthday. Choose another date. The day after? I mean, damn. And this clip always makes me so sad because it reminds me of the what ifs. What if she had said no? And I genuinely would want to know, did Anna really have all of the information at her disposal to make a sound decision? And even if she did, wasn't she too young and naive to really weigh the depth and the gravity of what was really going on? Because here's what we have now. We have Anna. She's a 34-year-old mother raising seven small kids on her own. And according to the Daily Mail, they have a source who said that Anna partially blames herself for Josh's infidelity and using pornography. And that is just so maddening. Now, the Daily Mail source also said that there would be some suggestion in the family household about whether Anna should have been more aware of the pressures Josh was under and the issues he was facing. So yeah, just blame it on the woman, right? That seems about right. So let's hope Anna one day finds the strength to leave this guy for good. And also, don't worry, there's still a lot more that we need to discuss about Anna and the Duggars in future videos. But in the meantime, check out this fascinating look inside the bizarre world of the Duggars. Most of these stories, at least of late, involve Josh Duggar. He has definitely made it to the pinnacle of the Duggar drama, especially in the last few years. 